Hey everybody, Ricky here with Apple Valley Farm. Thanks a lot for being here. Today, we are going to build a frame for one of our barn wood mosaics. Now we're gonna build it out of some old reclaimed pallet boards, and we're gonna build a really, really simple rustic frame. If you've hung around us for very long, you've seen me make this frame before, but I've never made it for one of our mosaics. But the, the process, the idea is basically the same. But I wanted to revisit it again with you and show you what we're doing. Now this is the board that we're using. You can see it's got a really nice weathered look to it. This is probably, it looks like some old oak, which is fine, doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna show you where we're going to put it and how we're going to cut it out. All right, here we go. Okay, so this is our mosaic. It's about 30 by 20. And as you can see, it's sitting on some half inch plywood as the backing. And then these pieces range from anywhere from maybe a quarter of an inch up to almost a half an inch themselves. So I want my frame to be about one and a quarter inch high. So it'll have a little bit of a shadow going on around there. Now I'm gonna take our board because I want this weathered look to be what everybody sees. I'm gonna take the board and I'm gonna rip one and a quarter inch strips off of each side of the board. And then we'll put them on here like this. That way everyone will see three sides of the weathered stuff except for this, but that'll be okay. Cause when I cut it to length, we'll have a little bit of reveal going on, but we'll sand that out. It won't look that bad. But you can see this is the frame that's gonna, gonna show going around this. Now we're going to put this, for example, on the bottom and have an overhang enough to have another piece come down and just butt into this. And we're gonna leave maybe about a half inch overhang on each side. It's gonna be a really simple, really rustic frame. We're not gonna use any miter joints, just basic straight cuts and butt joints, and we're gonna glue and brad it together. So with that, let's go to the table saw. So we really don't even have to get our tape measure out. Uh, we can just put this up against our side and mark it off. Now, this short side, I do want it to be exactly the length of this. So I want a nice square end here, and that worn end is not going to work. So I'm just going to strike off a line there. I'm going to strike off a line here. Now I'm just going to take this to the chop saw, cut it. I should be able to do the same thing on the other side, and then we'll have our two side pieces. Okay, now you can already see this is just gonna be gorgeous. Anyway, we've got our two side pieces there. They are the exact length of the piece. Now we're going to put a bottom frame on here. Now I want this to have a slight overhang right there. This is gonna be about a half of an inch. There we go, about a half inch overhang there. We're gonna leave that, and then we'll come down here and we'll strike off a line here, a half inch out. Do that on the top as well, take it to the chop saw, cut it, come back. Okay, th look at that. Ah, it is looking exactly like I wanted it to, except for these ends. And as I mentioned, these fresh cut ends are gonna stick out like a sore thumb. So we want to artificially weather these a little bit, and I'm gonna do two things. One, I'm gonna take the sander and I'm gonna rough this up just a little bit then we're gonna put some weathered wood accelerator, and I'll show you that in just a minute on this, and it's gonna gray it up just like that. Just like magic. Okay, we're gonna use the Varathane weathered wood accelerator, and this is something that I have used 
many, many times. You guys have probably seen me use it if you've been around for very long. I'll put a link to the video of our, of our work with it. It's pretty amazing stuff. I have no idea what it is, but it's very cool. And I will just dab it on our wood here and it will impart an artificial grayish patina to our wood when it dries. And I'm just gonna let it sit for a few minutes and uh, then this will dry out. But while it's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and attach the frame. Okay, while I'm waiting for these ends to dry a little bit more, I'm gonna go ahead and put the sides on. Now, I'm gonna use glue for one. And I'm just gonna put a little glue, a little bead of glue on here on each one of these. Nothing crazy. I'm not even gonna spread it. Just gonna put a bead of glue on there and we're just gonna push it up on here. I'm gonna get this flush on the ends and then I like to clamp everything in place just with some bar clamps, that'll be fine. These are some, uh, some Harbor Freight bar clamps, which work wonderfully. They didn't cost me a lot either, which is great. Anyway, we'll put these on here. I'm gonna hold this in place. This just makes sure they don't move around on me. There we go, let's make sure they're still flush. There we go. You don't need a lot of pressure. Now, I'm gonna use, uh, I've got a Ryobi Airstrike for my brad nailer. Um, I'm using one and a quarter inch brads, which I'm not a fan of, really. Uh, one inch is about as long as I like to go because once you get over one inch, and especially when you're going into some hard wood, the one and a quarter inch brads can tend to get a little squirrely and pop out in unexpected places. So I'm really not a fan of this, but these frame members are almost an inch thick. And I'm afraid that one inch brads might not do the trick. So we're gonna try the one and a quarter inch brads and uh, hopefully that will work with the glue and it'll kind of hold everything together. Hopefully it'll work just fine. We wanna pull this piece almost to the edge of my work table. So I've got a little bit of a lip here for me to rest this on. And I want to do this not in this way, just my experience with the airstrike, but actually I wanna turn it sideways. And I wanna be up just a little off of the surface of the work table. Let it go. Now let's see how that did. Uh, hopefully it didn't come through. And it didn't. So, anyway, that's my technique. I like to turn it to the side and pull it up off of the table just, just a little. And then let it go. I'm not bragging, but I think it looks really good. Look at that. It looks exactly like I wanted it to. Ah, so neat and easy. Really, really easy. Uh, these butt joint frames are something anybody can do. You don't have to have a lot of experience. You don't have to have a lot of tools. You just have to have a little confidence and go and just do it. It's, it's really, really simple. I started making these frames and cutting, like ripping my own wood for frames several years ago, and now this is pretty much the only kind of frame I do, unless somebody specifically requests a more traditional frame. But I like these, they're very strong, they're very um, appealing. I think I think they look really nice and they're really easy to make. But hey, thanks a lot for watching that. I hope you learned something from it. And if you have any questions, please let me know. If you like this video, then like this video. Give us a thumbs up. 
Uh, it helps so much. Leave your comments and please subscribe to our channel. We're doing stuff like this all the time. Thank you again. Hope you guys have a great day. See you next time. Real good. Deuces. How you do it like this? I don't know. Peace.